This is going to be John chapter 2, and we're going to look at the subject again of Jesus versus false gods. If you look at John chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, it says, In the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. But number one, we see Jesus Christ is above Mary. To many in the Catholic Church, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is an idol. They pray to Mary. But the Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, according to 1 Timothy 2.5. Jesus is our way to the Father, not Mary. Notice in John 2.4 that Jesus didn't even call her mother, and he never called Joseph his father. Mary is the mother of the man side of Jesus Christ, but before he was born as a man, he had always been here during eternity past. He was way before Mary. He even said, before Abraham was, I am. If he was before Abraham, he was before Mary. Also notice in verse 5, Mary tells the man to do whatever Jesus says. She knew who runs the show, and she knew it wasn't her. John 2, 4 says, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. It seems like the mind of Jesus Christ was always on the crucifixion. Imagine going through life knowing your horrible death was prophesied in the Bible. Jesus Christ knew he was going to die for the sins of mankind, and he did it voluntarily. Compare this with John 7.30, talking about the hour. It says, Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. So the hour is plainly about the crucifixion. And, the, and he says to Mary, My hour is not yet come. And that time was always on the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for sin because he was sinless. This also puts him above Mary. Mary was not sinless. The Bible lets us know, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mary was a great woman, but she isn't the head of the body of Christ. Jesus Christ surpasses her in this as well. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the church. And a woman isn't even supposed to be the head in a marriage, according to Ephesians 5.23. Mary also is no longer a virgin. She was a virgin when Jesus Christ was born, but she had kids after this. The Catholic Church, as far as I can see, lies about Mary still being a virgin. And the proof that this isn't true is in the very same chapter that we're studying if you go down a few verses to John 2 and verse 12, it says, After this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. So Jesus Christ had brethren, he had brothers. And now look at the verse in John two seventeen. It says, And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Remember that saying, The zeal of thine house hath house hath eaten me up this is a quote from a verse in psalms that prophesies about the lord jesus christ and look what it says in psalms 69 8 and 9 it says i am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children for the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up and when the reproaches of them that reproached me thee are fallen upon me Notice it says, my mother's children. Note the verse, Psalms 69, 8 through 9, and write that down next to John two seventeen. That's a prophecy about Jesus Christ. It's talking about his mother having children. So Mary is not a virgin. And if you're still not convinced after all this, then look at Mark 6, 3. It says, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Hoseas and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So Jesus Christ is above Mary. 
Number two, Jesus Christ is above the Hollywood, New Age, contemporary music, false Christ. The false Christ of Hollywood in the contemporary scene is not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Fake Christianity and the entertainment industry have a Jesus Christ that isn't Jesus Christ. He is a fake watered-down sissy that condones sin. He is a false Jesus that is okay with the desires of your wicked flesh. And this isn't the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Many liberals will come to John 2 to prove Jesus drank or made alcoholic wine. And they will use it as to prove that they can drink it. And this is a lie. The satanic New Age Hollywood Jesus would have turned the water into alcohol. Not the Jesus Christ that the Bible teaches. John 2, 6 says, And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. A firkins is, is a unit of measure, and it's something like nine to ten gallons. The water pots were what the Jews would have used for the purifying you read about in the Old Testament. In John 2, 7 through 9, it says, Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. So Jesus turned the water to wine, and wine is a type of blood. And Moses turned the water to blood in Exodus. Acts 3.22 talks about Jesus being a prophet like unto Moses. And then in John 2.10 it says, And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Well drunk doesn't mean they got drunk in the sense of having a buzz, it means they drank enough to quench their thirst. And the wine was so good that Jesus made that it was good from beginning to end. The proof of this not being strong drink is found in the Bible. When the Bible says wine, it can also be referring to grape juice. Proverbs 3.10 says, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Do the presses burst out with alcohol? It can't. It has to have time to ferment. New wine is grape juice. Isaiah 65, 8. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster. So new wine is found in the cluster. And then Numbers thirteen twenty three, It says, Cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. So new wine is found in the cluster. A cluster, what's that? It's grapes. So New wine is grape juice. It is found in the cluster, referring to a cluster of grapes. And the water Jesus turned to wine also didn't have time to set out and ferment. It was also in an open container. It was grape juice. Now that we know wine can also mean grape juice in the Bible, let's point out why it would be impossible for it to be strong drink if you believe the Bible and if you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is who, is who he says he is. If you have any sense at all, then you know Jesus Christ is God and that he's sinless. So the Lord Jesus Christ is not going to do anything that is forbidden in Scripture. Habakkuk 2.15 says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest the bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Leviticus 10.9 says, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Proverbs 20 and verse 1, Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So the New Testament also talks about alcohol. It says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Some will say, well, that just means don't drink excessively, don't get drunk. But the excess is in the wine itself. One drip is too much. First Peter 4.4 4 talks about excessive riot. How much riot is good? None. The excess is the riot. How much strong drink is good? None. 
Proverbs 23, 31 says we aren't even supposed to look at it. So the excess is in the wine. One drop is too much. So if Jesus turned the water to alcoholic wine, he disobeyed the Bible. He disobeyed his own word. He sinned and caused others to sin. And this is against the Bible and is blasphemy. To say Jesus turned the water to alcoholic wine is to claim Jesus Christ sinned, which he didn't. And if Jesus Christ did sin, then he is not the perfect sacrifice for sin. You're still in your sins. You're on your way to hell. And Jesus Christ didn't even resurrect because he was a sinner. Uh, moving on next, we see that Jesus is above the charismatic devils parading themselves around today. There are many devils parading around, getting worship as false gods. John 2.11 says, the be This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. So Jesus did many miracles. All the miracles he did were for his own glory. A true miracle from God brings glory to God. A miracle from the devil brings glory to the devil and the man performing the miracle. And this is what you see in today's charismatic cults. A fake healer will get up claiming to heal people. He gets money and fame. A tongue speaker claims she is getting this gift from God. She will use this false gift to claim to be more spiritual than others. And then she gets the glory. But one day Jesus Christ will get complete glory because all the devils will be cast into the lake of fire and the idols connected with them will be turned to dust. And the people who stay in rejection of Jesus Christ and go by their experience over the true words of God, they will face judgment. So Jesus Christ is above these charismatic devils. And next we see that Jesus Christ tramples over the false god of the ultra grace crowd, which is basically the same false Christ of the Hollywood crowd, but seems to be a tad bit more spiritual. In John two thirteen through 16, it says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold doves, Take not these things hence, and then make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And notice that they were in there and they were selling doves. This can be a picture of people making money for themselves in, in a sinful way off the things of God. There's a lot of fake healers, as we talked about before, that are claiming to be of God and they're pre pretending that what they're doing is of God and they're making money that way. The modern day New Age false Christ would never do what Jesus Christ did in these verses. The modern day false Jesus would never get angry. Jesus Christ gets angry. Matthew 5.22 says that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause will be in danger of the judgment. Jesus Christ was angry, but it was for a cause. The Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. You can be angry without sinning. The false Christ of this new age has new age Bibles and many of these New Age Bibles will remove the phrase without a cause from Matthew 5.22. So it would read that whosoever is angry with his brother will be in danger of the judgment. Something like that. And this makes the Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ of the Bible, a sinner according to these false Bibles. Because Jesus Christ did get angry. He wasn't in danger of the judgment because he wasn't angry without a cause. He got angry. The Bible says, Be ye angry and sin not. He told them, Ye have made my father's house and house of merchandise. And in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he refers to it as my house. Proving Jesus Christ knew he was God. In the other gospels, he says, They made his house a den of thieves. Foolish people who believe the Bible have changed. They believe it's changed through this Mandela effect. And they believe John chapter 2 has changed because it says the house of merchandise. They say, well, I always remember it saying den of thieves. 
but that is because the other Gospels call it Den of Thieves, and they don't read the Bible enough to know that John 2 has always said House of Merchandise. I remember it saying House of Merchandise before people even started on this Mandela Effect stuff. It's that people don't read the Bible enough. Uh, next we see that Jesus is above the gods who die like men. Psalms 82 talks about gods who die like men. Uh, that could be referring to those fallen angels that fell back in Genesis. Anything that is a false god or idol will die or be destroyed. Jesus Christ died, but now he lives. The false gods aren't getting back up. John 2.18 says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? If you look at Matthew twelve thirty nine and 40, it says, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So the sign is the resurrection. The best sign there is not there, I mean, the best sign there is that Jesus Christ is God is that he rose from the dead. That's the greatest sign that the Lord Jesus Christ is God. He didn't stay dead like a man stays dead. And John two nineteen through 21 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it again, for I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Notice that the body of Christ begins at the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.16 says, And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So when Jesus Christ died for us, that's when the body of Christ started. I'm not sure when people start getting started getting in the body of Christ, but we know that it began somewhere around when he died for us. Now back to John. John two twenty two. it says, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture in the word which Jesus had said. Notice in verse 22 that the copies of the originals are called scripture by the Holy Spirit. Because it says, And they believed the scripture. In the word which Jesus had said. They didn't have the original copy of what like Moses wrote. And the other people who wrote in the Old Testament. They had copies of the original. And many educated Bible correctors will claim only the originals are inspired. And that those are only the true scripture. But in John 2.22 it proves what the disciples had. And what Jesus had in their hand was copies, but it was also called scripture. The disciples and Jesus Christ, they had the words of God. They had been preserved all the way down from the originals. Also notice that the disciples didn't understand the gospel when Jesus told it to them. It wasn't until after the resurrection that they understood. And this proves that saints before Calvary were not believing the same gospel as we do today. They didn't even understand it. Notice how the disciples react when Jesus Christ tells them about the death, burial, and resurrection. In Luke eighteen thirty one through 34, it says, Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on. And they shall scourge him, and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. There's a lot in verse 34. Okay, Jesus Christ explains them how he is going to die and rise again. And they say that, and the Bible says this about the disciples in verse 34. It says, they understood none of these things. This saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. So you're going to tell me the disciples understood the death, burial, and resurrection like we do today. No. They didn't even understand it. It was hid from them. But Jesus Christ is ahead of the false gods because he resurrects. He's 
ahead of all the fallen angels. He is ahead of all the giants in the Old Testament. He is ahead of Buddha and Muhammad. They all stay dead and they'll all be in a lake of fire. And last, we, we see that Jesus is ahead of every idol because he knows and sees your heart. While false idols can't see, period. John two twenty three through 25 says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. It needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Revelation 9.20 says, Idols of gold can't see, nor hear, nor walk. And human false idols might be able to see, but they can't see your heart. Jesus Christ sees everything, everywhere, all the time. Job 26.6 says, Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He sees right in your heart, and he knows if you have believed on him from the heart. Psalms 26.2 says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. He knows a wicked heart and the wicked motives of your heart. He knows our hearts are deceitfully wicked above all things. And if you're not saved, then you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ from the heart. Count on Him and on Him alone as your payment for sin. Because Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. If you come to Him as the guilty sinner you are and believe on Him, then you can be saved and have eternal life. But this has been John chapter 2.